Hey, welcome to the L. Russ Show. My name is L. Russ, and I am a number one best selling author and master coach. My intention is to inspire, educate, and motivate you with weekly content featuring amazing guests and solo episodes. Visit my website, lrust.com, to learn more about me, my courses, free master classes, partner discounts, and much more. Enjoy the show. Hey, everyone. Today, my guest is Mandy Lemon, and I am so excited to talk to you today. Mandy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I've done a little bit of research and, and kind of kicked in and checked you out as I always do. And you are a delight yourself. Oh, you're so sweet. You know, I <laughs> I, want, I just want to sort of warn everyone right here at the beginning, Mandy's story and her history could, could be possibly triggering for, or like maybe a little bit traumatic if there's young kids in the car or something. They don't want to hear about some things that, you know, happen to people, bad, you know, <laughs> bad things that happen to good people. So I just wanted to warn everyone right there off the bat. And I, I do want to just get into your backstory. You know, just your bio, it's, um, you know, it's hard for a lot of people. Uh, it, it, it was tough for me to read. It's something that I commend you for because what you've been through and and the overcoming of it is such proof that anything is possible. But would you mind one more time in your life taking us through the rough story that is your childhood and, and life that came after? Sure, absolutely. So um, I, I was born in Harlan County, Kentucky. And and if you've ever watched uh, Deliverance or any of uh, those old stories of that nature, and you kind of picture the coal mines, I like to paint that picture um, of the coal mines of in eastern Kentucky. My grandfather uh, was a coal miner. In my family, we were the poor of the poor. I'm talking um, eating soup beans. If you've never had those before, soup beans. And my mother uh, was was not always able to provide for us. We were homeless a lot often. So you have homelessness. And then um, fast forward to June uh, 21st, 1986, the summer solstice. It became the longest day of my life. My father, and again, she was correct. There are some, tr- some trigger points here. My father was high on drugs and broke into our second story home. And um, sorry, sometimes this bothers me. Some, and, and, and he raped me at seven years old, um, stabbed me over 13 times and murdered my mother and left us both for dead. So I just want to stop there for a second. And sure. I mean, I, uh, I I commend you for having to sort of re- relive part of this story again. Um, Worst day of your life, no doubt, I'm assuming, um, but it does get a little bit uh, rougher from there. Uh, and I'll talk to you about some of the details, like what happened in that moment when, you know, after the after effect, but continue on and let us know what happened uh, beyond Sure, that. sure. And I, and I was thankful enough that I did have, a, I, have a, I have two older sisters. My older sister rushed in the room and tried to save us. Um, an off-duty police officer heard our screams. So thank you so much for their service and heard our screams and was able to rescue us. Um my and and here I am. I ended up spending a month in ICU with a collapsed lung and and bleeding and and I died twice on the way to the hospital. But once I recovered, it became very very clear that no one wanted little Mandy. Um, I was a reminder, as my aunt said, because my family in Kentucky I'm biracial, and I don't want to bring up the race aspect of it. But that's truly what happened to me. You got to think back. I mean, we still have racial issues now, but back in 1986, you've got a little African American girl who's um, African-American dad killed a Caucasian woman in, in, in the mountains of Eastern Kentucky where coal is king and where you have um, segregation to a degree that I recall just even as a child, um, did just being called some not so nice words, even in 1986 in Eastern Kentucky. So sure. no one wanted me and they sent me to an orphanage, which was um, about two and a half hours away um, just by myself. So I lived in the orphanage and aged out of the orphanage from the time I was 11. Well, I was, I was seven years old and aged out when I was 18. Um, and that aging out, why well, if you see any stories about foster kids, there are only two, there's, uh, there's a statistics that came out the other day. There are only 2% of foster children who go to college and graduate. So I'm very thankful to say that I did go to uh, Eastern Kentucky university. I, graduated with a degree in um, speech communication and communications. And I uh, landed a job at the NBC affiliate there in Lexington. And my life kind of took off from there. Um, but while I was in the orphanage, I mean, people don't talk about this a, a very often, but there there was a lot of abuse that happened, whether it was physical or mental or emotional, that those scars carried through 
And, and just like I, if you've ever dealt with anybody who's had post-traumatic stress disorder, I was diagnosed with everything but the correct diagnosis, which I want to advocate for you to find your correct diagnosis. But it truly was PTSD, like sights and smells would trigger me. And I, I would be on, I was, I, I'll, this is a very true story. I was, I, my, my ex-husband proposed to me at the Vatican in Rome and I had a meltdown. I mean, I, it's the holiest of holy places. He's, he's on one knee and proposes to me. And because it was a triggering moment, because there was so much emotion, I literally, I mean, he, we were getting in the, getting ready to leave Charles de Gaulle airport in Paris. And this guy's like, okay, listen, I don't know if I want to marry you. Let's, let's put this on the table <laughs> so, because nothing had, I, 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 so he went from absolutely, you know, wanting to, was it, was it the emotion like, that triggered you yeah. or was it about the environment? I got it. It was just, it was the, it was the emotion, the emotion, the fact that, that I, I was, you know, I, I was scared that this man was going to leave and, and take, you know, you, because all of those thoughts, when you grow up in, in foster care kids or for any of us who've had family members who've come in and out of our life and then just yeah. go in and out, Abandoned that them. was a yeah. major, yeah, yes, that was a major concern of mine is that this person would say, just like so many people do for, for kids or for, for people in general and say, Hey, I'm going to be there and I'm going to take care of you. And then it'd be taken away. And what would happen if that did? Now, mind you, I said all that to say this because that did eventually happen. After 18 years of marriage, we ended up adopting a, a, a little boy from state foster care. Um, and part of my story with that goes back into gun violence. And he reconnected with his biological mother, became addicted to pain pills and was selling drugs. And here at this time, I want to mind you that we um, in, in the state of Kentucky, you know, I, I went from being homeless to a, a landlord of five properties and and um, owning a restaurant. And I literally was at the epitome of my game driving a, a, a G wagon and um, number one in sales. I went after I left broadcasting, I went into mortgages and became number one in sales for community reinvestment acts in, in, in the city of Kentucky and loan officer. And the next thing I know, this kid that I thought that again, PTSD rears its head. And I thought that I was going to love and be able to take care of. I find out that he's high one night on drugs and goes on a gangbang shooting spree. And the problem with that is he shot into the wrong damn house. He ended up this days before Christmas, two years ago, shot into the wrong house. And the bullets, they ended up hitting a then five-year-old. And that little boy, sorry, was blinded. And his mom, and he almost died. So the impact, oh, it's horrible. And the impact of that, thinking that my child, my kid who, you know, has been all over the world, has had the best of best, had fallen so far. And and then you become as a parent, if a parent's listening to this, you, you've had those questions. My kid's a drug addict. My kid's an alcoholic. My kid's committing crimes. What did I do wrong? So you start blaming right, yourself. Or, or like I used to be in a foster home. I thought I'd be the best foster parent. And now this is yeah. happening. That's always, I'm oh, sure, yeah. in your mind too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I'm, I'm I'm sitting here thinking to myself, what have I done wrong? We've, we've, you know, people will say, oh, you didn't have him in church enough. Actually, we did. We lived across the street from the church. The pastors of the of, of, of our church at the time were our family friends. They would come over to chili cook-offs with us. So it wasn't that. I mean, so it was an internal struggle that Michael, my, my son, still had because he was dealing with PTSD that was undiagnosed until he went into the, in, in, into, um, into the, I guess you could say the, the prison system and they helped diagnose him and now he's on medication. But even so, my life literally fell apart at that. Thank you. My life literally fell apart at that moment. I went from having uh, a right, you know, a, a, all of this accolades and everything to finding myself standing on a bridge in Tampa, Florida, getting ready to commit suicide. And, and, mm-hmm. and I know that be triggering for folks, but I, but, and, and then in a, a chance meeting, call it an angel, call it God, call it your higher self, call it a manifestation. A stranger walked by and said to me, don't do that. You know, better. Aww. And I literally, and, and I, I could have just been standing and I've told this story before, but I could have just been standing there looking at the water. I mean, we are here in Florida and looking at the, I mean, right. just, <laughs> but it, it was the way that that person said that to me. And I don't know if I had a look in my eye, but I went back and then I ended up flying back to Kentucky, um, went back to live with my ex-husband. My, we, my divorce was final and went to stay with my ex-husband for a couple months. And uh, then I ended up uh, moving to Tampa, Florida. Um, outside of Tampa, Florida and splitting time between Kentucky and Florida. But since then it has, I, I, I've written a book and I've decided that my mess is a message for other folks and whether it is hope or 
Um, just, you know, resilience. I, I, I did a TV show for a while called Resilience Live TV. It was the TV host of that. And I just want to remind people that your mess is, is just whether it, whether it is learning how to change the copier, you can pass copier paper, you know, you're standing there and it's jammed on that Monday and you're like, okay, I got to get this to a meeting. You can learn something out of that. Nothing you go through is wasted. And I love to say that to people, but I mean, I had a crap show and, and things are better now. I'm, I'm, I, um, I practice manifestation and mental health healing. I lost 130 pounds, which is great too, because Woo-hoo. I was so, so de- yes, queen. I was so depressed. I was eating terribly. I wasn't taking care of myself and your gut, your gut health makes a, a difference in your mental health. And I just am so thankful that I've been able to uh, reinvent myself and uh, to follow this new path. Well, I want to say, you know, <clears throat> you're a perfect example of it, it happened twice. And I'm really glad that guy caught you on the bridge, right? Because it enabled you to use the tools that you used initially, probably to get through that first traumatic thing. This happened in about 2020. So it's been a few years. Um, yeah. how, how are you doing now? Do you feel, I mean, I know there's probably mm-hmm. still some stuff going on with the sun and in prison and whatnot, but how, how are you doing and moving through this second uh, landslide you got? I'm going to be honest with you. I, I had a, I, I have a feeling in my heart. This is, and everybody's like, 23 is going to be your best year. No, I know it is. I, I can feel that in my heart. I had, I played, I laid the groundwork over the last, you know, 18 months of what I'm reaping the benefits of now, whether it's my businesses that have taken off or my public speaking, I do travel and as a motivational speaker and share the story, you know, and there's more details obviously um, that I share in, in those motivational speaking moments. But I, I found myself a groove and just like they say, Stella got her groove back. I, I, I hate to admit it at 43. I finally feel like I am who I was supposed to be a long time ago. I walked in so many folks shadows and put so many people first and put so many, and, and I didn't love myself. And so many times I find I would, I would eat and let's just bring it down to even eating and losing weight. I would just eat what I felt like I deserved. Well, what do I really, what did I really deserve? I deserve just the same because that was the way I was brought up. I was brought up to, you know, just take whatever comes your way. But in the truth of the matter is I deserve better. I deserve to be treated well. And I didn't love myself. And until I did, no one else was treating me that same way. Mm -hmm. So since then I have been a, yeah, it's been amazing. So LA weekly, um, just named me the number four uh, person to watch in 2023, which is, I saw that. Yeah, That's yeah. And I, I'd love to. Um, I want to get into your five, the five method you developed in a minute. But let's talk. What if someone's listening and they're struggling with similar circumstances or experiences? I mean, maybe not the exact order of which things occurred, but you know, um, what kind of advice do you have for people that may be struggling with these types of things? The I guess I would say the second part, maybe your second landslide, where it's like a son or a family that's you know oh falling my gosh, because yeah. of this. The, the first thing that I tell people when I meet with them and I and I've, I've have just pay fo- folks reach out to me, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok or Twitter or any of that nature. And I'll, I'll just be honest with them. And what is your do you the way it goes back to that five plan? The first question I always ask people to say is, are, are you safe? You know, ask yourself if you're safe. And so many times we're in we are in environments where we aren't safe. And you've seen that meme on 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 social media where plants grow, where they're watered in. And, and is it the plant that's not growing because of this environment it's in, or is it the plant itself? So oftentimes, sometimes you have to remove yourself from your environment that you're in. And that would be the first thing I would recommend is literally take a moment to yourself, go to a hotel. If you have a, a chance, go sit by yourself and evaluate where you are and where you want to be. And those 30, 60, 90 day plans, I mean, I, 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 I truly, truly believe in goal setting because if you don't have a plan, you fail. You truly, truly do. And I found myself, one of the, one of the tips that I I give people in the short of it is you got to have a plan to get yourself up and out of it. Waller, I I am part of the five up. The second step is I'm going to give you five minutes, five days, whatever you need, part of the five to sit and wallow in self-pity. Okay. You you get it. Okay. So many times, I mean, you, you're probably, you're part of that generation where your parents are like, okay, you scraped your knee, you're, it's about to fall off, get up and keep moving. But how often, if we don't nurture ourselves and heal from within and allow ourselves to have that moment of whether it's anger, you know, go through those emotions and we've been suck up your tears was one of the things that I was always taught as, as a child. Did you know that tears are healing? 
scientifically proven tears are healing. And we've been told not to, and tears have different chemicals in them. There's different types of tears. And whether it is a tear that is emotionally impacted or a happy tear, or just to like those emotions, we, we don't allow ourselves to heal. We don't, we just push through it and, and keep going. And, you know, we're putting, I'll put one foot in front of the other and, and keep on going. Well, sometimes it's okay for you to say, guess what, guys? I am going to my room. I'm going to a hotel. I'm going to go to my cousin's house and I'm going to sit here and I'm just going to journal. I'm big on journaling because if you get those thoughts out more often times than not, you're going to be able to come back to it in, in a couple of days and say, did I really feel that way? Is that how it really is? And sometimes the facts are facts. Yeah, yeah, that really is how you feel. And that really is the situation that removing the emotional aspect um, at times can also be beneficial. Yeah, I want to chime in and just highlight that because, um, you know, I'm a thyroid expert and Louise Hay had discovered through her work that, you know, the, the spiritual or whatever component to hypothyroidism. And after interviewing all these people, she noticed that it was uh hypothyroidism, the spiritual root cause could be the inability to speak up, afraid of speaking up and or not expressing your creativity. So what happens is, is you get like a choked up feeling in your throat. We've all had it, right? Yeah. And that for me personally, because I had issues with um, probably expressing vulnerability to certain people or not. So if I ever get that choked up feeling, that's my warning sign mm-hmm. to be like, speak, bitch, speak, like talk, speak. <laughs> <laughs> call somebody, yeah. talk, whoever. And I had a, a moment not too long ago where I had, I was so, I had a moment of such like great gratitude that tears just started streaming. Like I wasn't even crying, like literally waterfalls just out of my eyes. Like I, it was yes. a happy tears thing. But then I got the choked up feeling in my throat, probably because I was welling up and maybe there was that former like embarrassment or weirdness about being vulnerable. You know what I mean? And oh no, in, I understand. And in that moment, I literally said to myself, because I, I was I was having that moment and then I started to choke up and I'm like, no, no, just express what you're feeling right now. Express it, say it, say it. Don't just, you know what I mean? And it was so helpful, but it was that moment. And that's what the this work is all about, right? Catching oneself. In oh, yes. Yeah. And um, tears are important. You do have to wa- wallow in it for a while. It's not buck up, get back on the horse. Well, I'm not going to bang on the fucking horse if it's, you know, missing a leg. <laughs> yes. It hasn't eaten in five days. Like, you know, so. Exactly. That's kind of the generation I'm, I'm older than you, but yeah, it's like bootstrap, get over it, get back on the horse, just keep going, no pain, no gain. And you know, that's all, uh, we all agree yeah. with the opposite now. So, oh yeah, well, I, I'll be 44 in April. I, I, I look a lot younger than I am. <laughs> so I'll be, I was, I'm a 79 baby. So I, um, I, 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 I completely commend you for recognizing that feeling and, and, and into, and I, 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 part of my reason that I was able to lose weight as well as I started eating intuitively. So have you ever been like, okay, I really, really need, I, I really want like this. I really want this. And you go seek it out. And the next thing you know, you're like, okay, the next day I'm not as hungry. And it was just as simple as our bodies are, are, if we listen to that spirit that's within us, that, that gut, that gut instinct, someone says, okay, don't go down that way. And the next thing you know, you could, you go ahead and go down that way. And you're sitting in traffic for 15 minutes when, when you were like, okay, I should have gone this way. Listening to your gut instinct. It gives me chills. Even talking about it makes so much of a difference in building um, stamina and building resilience because so often we are listening to the outside forces around us with the inability to listen to ourselves. And that was my, my tweet today. My Tuesday tip was, how do you love yourself? How much do you love yourself? If you love yourself, how are you showing it? How are you showing that you love yourself? You know, is it, is it literally through whether you are just showing yourself, well, I'm eating better, I'm living better, I'm dressing better, I'm, I'm getting out and doing these things. But if you don't love yourself, you can't love anybody else. You know? Mm-hmm. 100% t- true. And if you don't enjoy your own company, no one else is going to probably either. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Let's, I, you know, it must really be, I know for me, I had to get over and I ended up writing a chapter about it. And of course I speak about it. Um, I had to get over uh, the shame element in my life. I had a permanent hand disability at the age of 23 and I was very embarrassed about being like less than or perceived as a, pro, you know, I, I, and I could hide it because you couldn't see it. So I had all sorts of issues with the shame around it. And long story short, finally, when I sort of like came out about it, you know what I mean, which uh, you know, for everyone holding something like that, it does feel like that. And talking about it uh, over and over, like the first time I talked about it, tough. Second time, third time. Now it's just, it, it's it's helpful and healing to my experience. And I'm wondering how has your work as a speaker and author helped you heal and cope with your experiences? 
Well, I, I, I like what you said. Sometimes the, the, the pain that someone else inflicts upon us, we wear, whether it is physically, mentally, or emotionally. And we can be carrying that weight with us for years and for months. And, and it's not even our own weight. You know, sometimes the sins, and, and I had someone, I had a friend of mine, her name's Melissa Moore. She actually helped me write, write part of my book. Um, she said to me, Mandy, you are not, sorry. And I, I have to remind myself of this sometimes. Mandy, you are not Joseph Kenton's daughter. You are Mandy Lemon. That is an assignment that someone had, you, you assigned that, that label to yourself. You assigned the label of, of a, a rapist daughter. You assign that. No one is sitting to you and nobody walks up to you and is like, oh, you know, oh, you're the rapist daughter. Nobody, nobody walks up to you and says that. Right. You know, but, but I was carrying that weight because I assigned it to myself of someone or for the, for, you know, for the parents. Like that being the main history. identity of yourself, the main description yes. is having it be yes. like the bullet point 10 down below. Right. Yes. Yes. Instead of, and so, so many times we wear our labels that other people have placed upon us as our identity. And that becomes how we what walk into a room. You know, how often have you, like, I, I call it speed dating for friends. So you'll sit down with a friend and, and within first five minutes of it. I'm one of those people I can tell you are too. I, I, I will, t- I accidentally tell you too much information. <laughs> I'm horrible at dating. I'm absolutely horrible at dating. I will give you too much information. That's probably why I don't get second dates, but I'm, I'm joking. But I, I, I find myself in one of those positions where I, I hear the, I was carrying the labels of other people rather than someone getting ready to say, you know, Oh, you're, you're, you're a survivor. You're just Mandy. And, and my, my, my family back in Kentucky was very well known. If you Google us, I mean, we were, we kind of were the, the, the party crew of Kentucky, but for so long, I carried the label of, and God bless my ex-husband, he's a great guy, I carried his label. I was his wife. I was my, mm-hmm. my and, and then I became the shooter's mother. And then I became, you know, those, I became these people. And then I had to, and I really truly feel like this is a true story. Part of that. I, I talk about this when I do my motivational speaking, I was so unhealthy mentally I was flying back and forth, like getting on planes and back and forth, back and forth. I lost a G wagon. I lost a Mercedes. I was literally so out of it. But when I finally came to my recognition, and I say that to say this, I, I finally came to my recognition of who I was. It was almost like a weight lifted off. It was almost like I was like, oh, okay, I'm just Mandy Lemon. I'm I'm not Goldie Prosper, my mother's my mother's name. I'm not those people. I I'm, I appreciate the association and I get that, but finding myself and finding my own accolades and being able to get to where I am today, just based on my story and based on who I am has been so healing for me because so many times, like we, I, we carry the labels of other people and I, I, I've let go of that. Um, I also, let's talk about being a victim because um, anyone would read your yeah. story and go, that's a victim, right? But you certainly didn't <laughs> treat your life like that. You forged ahead, you went onward and up it seemed like every failure you took his feedback. And uh, I do want to point out, you know, you went to college with like five bucks to your name. What the That's- fuck? <laughs> I mean, like this right there, everybody, you know what I mean? I mean, that true, true grit, true perseverance. You are the perfect example of perseverance. Um, I just want to, I have to just, I, mean, I wanted to mention that. Um, let's talk. I just want to touch the, touch on the foster care system. How can it be improved in your mind? And oh I'm my sure God. hundred ways, but give us a, uh, yeah. I mean, it, when you, and, and I, I quoted that statistic a, a, a bit ago, about 2% of foster kids going to college. Did you know in most states and, and graduating, did you know that most foster kids can go to college for free? Now, I didn't know that. My fast fund, all that stuff was not filled out correctly. I just finished paying off my dang student loan. So uh, if anybody from the state of Kentucky is listening to this and want to refund me, that'd be great. <laughs> right. <laughs> that'd be great. But no, but so, but, but the education system that there's a prison to foster, there's a foster care to prison pipeline. A lot of foster kids end up getting mug shots before they even have a driver's license picture because they are either not the foster parents who are, who are there to help them are not educated to deal with the traumas and trials that they, the kids come with. And then they just push them out. But I feel like the biggest, biggest problem that we are seeing is you have foster kids who age out of foster care Okay, so you're age out of foster care at 18. I luckily had $5 and was able to go to college. But if I hadn't had that $5 and hadn't had the person in my life who insisted upon me going to college, I would, I mean, the, the statistics of foster kids who are on the streets, who are homeless, who are drug trafficked, who are sex trafficked, 
is astronomical. There mm. has to be some legislation put into place very similar to what's overseas that when these kids turn 18, we're, we're giving them some, some sort of whether it is a subsidy and, and making that and getting, I worked through three jobs through college. I worked three jobs. I'm not asking for a handout. I'm asking for help because I, I, I sent my, my ex-husband a text message the other day. We were joking back and forth and I was going into surgery and I was like, who does a, a divorced orphan call when they're going into surgery? So who are these kids calling? They have, there's no support system for these kids once we age out, of, I age out of foster care. So you're sitting on the street. You're not going to college. Then you're not getting a job because nowadays you have to either have a high school diploma or a college degree to get at even a decent $25,000, $35,000 paid job. So you are in the American economy. And if you look at after COVID, the amount of people who ended up in foster care, the astronomical amount who were left orphaned. I mean, we're, we've got in five to eight years, we're going to have a crisis on our hands in the foster care system because of the way that we are handling it right now, the aging out process, because there are generations now. A part of my book, The Fostered One, talks about the generations that are in foster care. My, my son, Michael, his mother was, a, was, in, was in foster care when I met him. My, at my other son, Josiah, his mother, bio mother, was in foster care. So there you have two children. And so, and, and, and now no offense to Michael, Michael's not going to beat that statistic. He really won't. He didn't graduate from high school. Now right. Josiah, will, our other son, Josiah will, but the, the, the thought that we are not doing anything for these foster kids or, or for a lot of our children in general to, per, you know, who are in low to moderate incomes or even um, in, in that, in that, that area to help them say, you know, there is a better way. There is a better way. You know, and, and drugs are quick money. And it and, and I and it didn't make sense for me for me to understand why Michael was selling drugs and doing drugs. I mean, we were living in a seven hundred thousand dollar house, and, and this kid had a, a, a check card since he was like 12, 13 years old. But it was there are there are genetics that play a factor, and then there are also people who are just simply predisposed to certain types of behavior because of lineage. I mean, you, you've heard, you've heard that about the curses in the Bible. And I, I, the more an epidemiologist has, is, is looking in with this with me. She's an amazing person. Um, and we're, we're doing a little research and want to kind of present this eventually and say, Hey, listen, this, this looks kind of crazy here. Is there something we can do? Is there some, is something we can pull back or set a precedence? Or once a kid goes into foster care, um, I have, when I do speak to foster parent groups, I have what I call a door dash plan for these foster parents. Instead of going out and buying them the $125 pair of shoes that they don't need, let's put that $125 a month while they're in your care for two years in what I call a DoorDash plan so that when they do age out or when they right. go away, they'll have some money. And I you love can that idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then that's something that, that I, I really, really pushed and continued, continue to work on. That's amazing. And tell us a little bit, well, we can go, everyone, we'll put everything in the show notes, but everyone can go to Mandy, L-E-M-O-N-D.com. Um, tell us about, can we find your book at your website? Where's the best place to get it? So the book, the book it will is, sorry, the best place to find the book is on amazon.com. So that's the best place you can find that. Um, my website, we're revamping it because um, I, I I can't really del- delve into too much. What I just I just took a position that is going to marry both not only my um, my uh, love for motivational speaking, but also take me back a little bit to my TV roots, and I'm super super excited about that. So we uh, inked that deal over the last couple of days, so I'm super excited about that. So look look for that too. So excellent. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience before we go? No, I just appreciate you having me on. Um, I love to share my story. If there's anyone, I mean, like you, like you said, my my links will be available. If you ever just need someone to talk to, and this has happened, I've had strangers, literal strangers, just reach out to me via Instagram, TikTok, and say, "Look, I'm having a bad day." Sometimes it's okay to just have someone who is a non-biased entity who is not a therapist who can just sit and listen. And while I am a talker and I will give you some advice, it's okay. I, I will just sit and listen. Believe it or not, I can be still in now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm excited about what you have ahead of you. And I just want to commend you on getting through this, not re- not staying the victim, forging ahead, uh, finding meaning and strength and all of these really tough, I mean, the toughest things imaginable in life. And you are just really an amazing example of resilience and perseverance. And I'm just, uh, I think everybody's amazed by you. So thank you so much for sharing your life's work and your story with our audience. 
Thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me. All right, everyone. We'll see you next week. Hey, listeners. You know, over the years, a ton of companies have approached me to collaborate, but I will only promote companies whose products I believe in and that I actually use and consume on a regular basis. So let me tell you about some of my favorite companies that I can offer you discounts for. Rep Provisions, an amazing company doing incredible things for our planet, topsoil, and animals with regenerative agriculture. And it's my number one source for quality pasture-raised meat and chicken. Visit repprovisions.com and use code L15 for 15% off. I'm also obsessed with a company called Carnivore Crisps. They make a lean, all-natural, and delicious alternative to conventional snacking made with just real meat and real salt totally addictive and my favorite ones are the beef brisket and the ribeye visit carnivorecrisps.com and use code paleo10 for 10 percent off i also love and regularly use paleo valley products they make amazing supplements and delicious paleo products i use the superfood greens powder grass-fed beef sticks the organ complex and their bone broth bars i love the lemon and apple i also use their essential c complex and more Visit paleovalley.com forward slash promos forward slash L Russ for 15% off. I also love Primal Kitchen. They make delicious paleo approved, gluten free, grain free, soy free, and no refined sugar products. And I use them daily from their collagen powders and sauces and marinades to their avocado and olive oil. So good, so healthy. Visit primalkitchen.com and use code L10 for 10% off. I also love paleo powder and use it almost on everything I cook. They make incredible seasoning blends and they also have these incredible grain-free coatings that feel just like crispy breadings that you would have had prior to knowing that there's another way. So visit paleopowder.com and use code L15 for 15% off. 